2,000 years ago, the Savior warned that in the last days there would be wars and rumors of wars, later saying that peace would be taken from the earth. In a world tossed with tempest and not comforted, as Jehovah said it would be, how do we find what he called the covenant of peace? We find it by turning to him who said he would have mercy on us and with everlasting kindness grant peace to our children. In spite of frightful prophecies and unsettling scriptures declaring that peace would be taken from the earth generally, the prophets have taught that it does not have to be taken from us individually. Let's try to practice peace in a personal way, applying the grace and healing balm of the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ to ourselves and our families and all those we can reach around us. Such help and hope is dearly needed because in this worldwide congregation today are many who struggle with any number of challenges, physical or emotional, social or financial, or a dozen other kinds of trouble. But many of these we are not strong enough to address in and of ourselves. For the help and peace we need is not the kind the world giveth. No, for the truly difficult problems, we need what the scriptures call the powers of heaven. And to access these powers, we must live by what these same scriptures call principles of righteousness. And what are those principles? The prophet Joseph Smith was taught them in response to his own version of the cry, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In the cold, uncaring confinement of Liberty Jail, he was taught that the principles of righteousness included such virtues as patience, long-suffering, gentleness, and love unfeigned. It's a time to pledge total loyalty in word and deed to the Lamb of God, who bore our griefs and carried our sorrows in his determination to finish the work of salvation in our behalf.